Welcome to episode three of my Kawasaki S1550 four-cylinder engine build. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how I make the front sprocket line up with the rear sprocket with a slightly wider engine. The first thing I have to do is to fit the transmission output shaft into the upper crankcases, engaging it on the C-clip in the output bearing. At the other end of the transmission shaft, it's really important to line up the location dowel in the crankcases with the hole in the bearing. I check that the output shaft rotates freely, and it does, so now I can put on the lower crankcase. The original centre line of the three cylinder engine was in the middle of cylinder number two, but now it's between cylinders number two and three. I make two marks, one in the centre of cylinder number three and one between cylinders number two and three and measure that distance and this is the offset I need to put into the sprocket. I measure the distance with my steel rule and it's 48 millimetres so the sprocket needs to be moved across 48 millimetres. I need to weld in two pieces of aluminium to make a support for an outrigger bearing. So first of all, I'll get a piece of card, rub around with my finger to trace the outline so I can cut out the shapes. With the shapes marked out, I use my pen knife scissors to cut them out. These are so easy to use and ideal for cutting out paper templates. There we go, that's just perfect. So now I can mark it out on a block of aluminium and then cut that out. I draw around the shapes with my marker pen, then go up to my shed in the top of the garden to use my small bandsaw to cut them out. It's a bit wet outside, we've had persistent rain for a few days. The bandsaw is quick and makes easy work of the cutting the aluminium plate. It gives me a rest from using my hacksaw. I cut the pieces slightly oversized, so now I'm going to put them on my old miller machine to true them up. It's really nice operating old manual machines. You feel the cut through the handles. With the flat surfaces milled to size, I use my file to blend the radius. And that fits much better. So now, with both pieces milled up and fitting perfect, I can drill two holes, one in each piece, for the mounting point for the outrigger bearing. I use my dividers to mark two holes each side of the centre line and then mark their positions with a marker pen. I then centre punch where the lines cross, ready for drilling. I drill two holes at 6.8 millimetres diameter. This is the tapping size for an M8 thread. With the holes drilled, I transfer the parts to my vise, put a bit of oil in the hole, and then cut the thread with my M8 tap and tap wrench. With the threads cut, I check the fit of an M8 cap head screw and it screws in perfect, so I'm really pleased with that. I make up a little metal strip to hold the two blocks in place while I weld them into the crankcases. They fit nicely in place, so they're all ready for welding. I pick up the crankcases and take them outside to my barbecue to heat them up. This helps the welding process. After about half an hour, the crankcases are really hot and I've lost my heatproof gloves, so I grab an old towel to stop burning my hands. I get straight on with the welding to weld the two blocks in place while the crankcases are still really hot.
With the welding complete, I lift the crankcases into the vise and secure them tightly so I can file down the surfaces to make them smooth, ready for the outrigger bearing support. I'm using a coarse single cut file which is just perfect for cast aluminium. With the surface filed smooth, the next thing I need to do is make the outrigger support bracket and I'm going to use quarter inch thick mild steel strip for this. So I mark out the length and put it in my vise to use my hacksaw to cut the piece off. I get so many comments about how I cut straight lines with a hacksaw, but it's quite straightforward really. The trick is not to force the blade through the metal, let it cut slowly and guide it as you're going through. Well that's not bad, I'm really pleased with that. So now we can mark out the two holes. I then use a centre punch to mark the centres. I then drill the two holes 8.5mm diameter, which is M8 clearance. Then I remove the drill and replace it with a countersink to take up all the burrs and sharp edges. I offer the plate up to the engine and put in the two screws and it fits just perfect. I'm really pleased with that. The next thing I need to do is cut off the teeth of an old front sprocket. So I go up to my shed to use my angle grinder and I notice that Robin's having a bath. He loves it in the bird bath. I need to turn the sprocket into a round diameter on my lathe. So if I cut off the teeth first with my angle grinder, it saves a lot of machining because this is case hardened steel and it is really tough to machine. With all the teeth removed, I go back to the garage and mount it onto a spare gearbox shaft. Then I mount the shaft in a three-jaw chuck on my lathe. Put the centre in to support and start machining using a brazed carbide tool. The swarf comes off so hot it glows red hot. With the sprocket turned down, the next thing I need to do is make a thick walled tube to mount the other sprocket 48mm away. I just happened to find this piece of steel bar that's almost turned down to the right diameter, so I put it in my chuck, skim the diameter and face off the end. The next thing I have to do is drill a large hole up the centre, so I start with a 12mm pilot drill followed by my 25mm drill. With the centre hole drilled, the next thing I need to do is rough out the recess for the bearing. I'll leave this undersized slightly because I'll be finished machining it when the welding's complete. With the bearing recess roughed out, I remove the bar from the lathe, put it in my vise and saw off the end. Then I return it to the chuck and face off the end to length. With the tube faced off the length, the next thing I need to do is bore a recess to press in the sprocket disc that I machined earlier. This needs to be a tight interference fit. After several cuts, I offer up the sprocket disc to the bore and it feels just right, so I remove the tube from the chuck, take it over to my vise, ready to press the two parts together.
and it's a really tight fit just what i wanted so the next thing i'm going to do is bolt the parts together as well because these are going to be welded and i don't want them moving I weld the two parts together using my TIG welder. With the welding complete, I let the part cool down then offer it up to the gearbox shaft and it fits perfect. I'm really pleased with that. So the next thing to do is bore a large hole in a new sprocket. I grip the sprocket in my four jaw chuck on the lathe so I can true it up to the central boss. Then, using a carbide tool, I machine away the surface. It is so hard and sparks fly everywhere. Front sprockets are made from case hardened material, so they're hard on the outside and tough in the center. I keep machining until the central splined boss falls out. Then I can bore out the hole till it's just a bit smaller than the extension shaft. And that's just perfect. So I take the sprocket out of the chuck, take it over to my press to press it onto the extension tube. It's a really tight fit and takes several tons of force. With the sprocket pressed on, I weld it in place, remount it on the gearbox shaft, put it back in my lathe and bore out the hole to make the bearing fit just right. I take several cuts in my boring bar, checking the bearing fit after every cut, and eventually it's a nice sliding fit. I can feel it just starting to go in, so the next cut will be perfect. The outrigger bearing slides in just right, so now I can remove the shaft from the lathe, put it in the vise, undo the big central nut and take off the sprocket extension and try it on the engine for the first time. And it fits perfect, just what I wanted. And when I measured it with my rule, it was 48 millimeters offset. So that's just right. So now I can finish off the outrigger bearing support bracket. I had a rummage and found a piece of bar that fitted nicely into the bearing. So now I'm making a cardboard template to finish the bracket. My pen knife scissors are never too far away. I use them a lot for cutting out cardboard templates. After a bit of fine trimming, the cardboard template fits just right, so now I can cut the piece of bar down to length, then transfer the template onto a piece of steel and cut it out. This is 8mm thick mild steel strip, and I'll be cutting it with my hacksaw in the vise. I really enjoy making parts with hand tools, especially my hacksaw. It's so rewarding when you see the parts taking shape. And here I'm trimming off a sliver of metal to make it fit just right. I finish off using a file just to remove any sharp edges and I offer it up to the bracket and it fits just right. I am really pleased. So now we're all ready for welding. I've just noticed that the bar that I cut off earlier has got a rough edge, so I take it over to my lathe to face it off so it's all smooth. That's better. So I replaced the central bracket and it's all ready to weld now. I'll be welding it in situ to make sure the alignment remains correct. I pick up the crankcases and grip them in my vise and the bracket just slides in lovely. So now it's all ready for welding. The welder is set to DC current for welding steel. It is so quiet and nice compared to welding aluminium which is on AC and it makes a right racket. 
With several strong tack bars in place, I removed the bracket from the engine, removed the engine from the vise and put the bracket back in the vise to complete the welds. It was so much easier. With the welding complete, I trial fit the bracket back on the engine and it fits perfect and the sprocket rotates really smoothly. I'm really pleased with that. So I take it out in the garden and give it a nice coat of silver spray. I finished spraying the parts, but it's really cold here today, so I take the parts down to my barbecue that I sometimes use as a low bake oven. After just five minutes at 110 degrees, the paint is dry and hard and okay to pick up, so I assemble the parts back onto the engine and it's done, just in time for a nice cup of tea and a cupcake, but this week there's no cupcakes cooking because Tracy's gone shopping, Christmas shopping, and she's been gone for ages, but anyway, there'll be more cupcakes in the next episode. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really pleased that my S1 four-cylinder engine is coming along. And in the next video, I'll be putting together the bottom end.